The quirkiest and floopiest of the friends never stops making us laugh. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious Phoebe moments from Friends. Are, are, are you freaking kidding me? Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at the funniest Phoebe scenes rather than the most touching. So we're excluding pivotal moments like her wedding to Mike and her giving birth to the triplets. Number 10. Princess Consuela Banana Hammock Apparently, you can change it to anything you want, so I thought, all right, here's an opportunity to be creative. Phoebe dates a lot of questionable guys before finally finding her prince charming. We didn't think it was possible that she would find someone as wonderfully weird as she is. But she and Mike make a perfect match. Of course, when Phoebe goes to change her last name after getting married and finds out that there are no limitations on what your legal name can be, hilarity ensues. So, meet Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. While Phoebe's antics are funny, it's almost too much to handle when she and Mike end up getting competitive over who can pick a weirder name. Mike Crap Bag? No, no Mike, no, just, just Crap Bag. First name Crap, last name Bag. What's even funnier is that Phoebe has no idea what a banana hammock really is. Do you even know what a banana hammock is? It's a funny word. It's a speedo. Number nine, being an extra on Joey's soap opera. Oh my God, I'm gonna be on TV! Lisa Kudrow may be a great actress, but she sure can play a bad one on TV. In season nine, when she's a little short on cash, Phoebe takes Joey up on an offer to work as an extra on Days of Our Lives. She ends up being incredibly nervous and completely messes up her takes, escalating the chaos in every scene she's in. Joey tries to give her acting advice to help her out, but she takes the whole thing a bit too seriously. Sorry, Phoebe, but we think you should stick to your day job. I can't do that. I'm an actor. I have a process. You're a masseuse. You have a table with a hole in it. Number eight, her sexy phlegm. God, I love how sexy I am. <laughs> <laughs> Never one to miss a good opportunity, Phoebe decides to capitalize on her illness when she comes down with a cold that affects her singing voice. My sticky shoe. My sticky, sticky shoe. At first, she's upset that she won't be able to perform while her vocals are compromised, but after giving a successful performance with her new raspy voice, she decides to keep it up even after she's no longer under the weather. I lost my sexy phlegm! In the end, she becomes so desperate to get her sensual voice back that she goes as far as kissing Gunther to make it happen. They say laughter is the best medicine, and Phoebe definitely delivered the laughs both here and when she got chicken pox in season two. Just wanna grab all these houses and rub them all over my body! No! <laughs> no! Number seven, meeting Mike's parents. They live on the Upper East Side on Park Avenue. Oh yeah, she can't be herself. <laughs> Phoebe has had a rough past and difficult family life, so she's understandably nervous when it comes to meeting her new boyfriend's parents for the first time. This is amplified by the fact that Mike's parents are very wealthy, and Phoebe worries she won't be able to connect with them. So where does everyone summer? The persona she creates to try to fit in with the Hannigans is over the top and just ridiculous enough to make it totally endearing. Of course, her attempts to seem normal don't exactly go as planned, and Theodore and Bitsy aren't quite taken with her. This is the perfect opportunity, though, for Mike to reveal what a great boyfriend he really is. And you don't have to like her. You just have to accept the fact that I do. Number six, the fire alarm. What do you want from me? In this classic episode, all six characters pull an all-nighter for various reasons. While all the storylines are comical, Phoebe's definitely takes the cake. She is plagued by the sound of her fire alarm while she tries to sleep, and can't figure out how to silence it. How could you be beeping? I just disconnected you! I took out your battery! How could- Don't interrupt me! Even after dismantling it, the noise still won't stop, so she resorts to throwing it down her building's trash chute. This is where you and I part ways, noisy bitch. Since it's illegal to throw away a smoke detector, though, Phoebe ends up having a run-in with a local firefighter. Hey, do you have a search warrant? Because the last time I checked, this was still America. What makes this especially hilarious is that we can all relate to the nuisance of fire alarms, which can admittedly be more trouble than they're worth. <laughs> Good! Number five, trying to teach Joey how to speak French. Oh, mon dieu. Oh, de foof. <laughs> When Joey tells the gang he has to speak French for an upcoming audition, Phoebe volunteers to help him, because of course she's somehow fluent in French. Oui, bien sûr, je parle français. Qu'est-ce que tu penses alors? Joey's attempts are embarrassingly bad, so much so that it seems like he can't even simply repeat the sounds Phoebe's making. He is clearly a lost cause. Je m'appelle Claude. 
Je te coupe plow. The real kicker comes at the end of the episode when Phoebe goes to see the casting director and gives him an explanation for Joey's atrocious language skills. C'est mon petit frère. Il est un peu retardé. It's almost as bad as the time Phoebe tried to teach Joey how to play the guitar. This is bear claw. Okay. Um, turkey leg. And old lady. Number four, running with Rachel. Come on, let's go running, let's go! The way that Phoebe runs is a perfect exemplification of her entire personality. She does what makes her happy and doesn't care what anyone thinks. When new roommates Rachel and Phoebe decide to take up running together, Rachel is shocked at Phoebe's flailing, spazzy running style. When she runs, she looks like a cross between Kermit the Frog and the Six Million Dollar Man. At first, she's so embarrassed that she makes excuses to avoid jogging with her. But in the end, Rachel realizes how freeing it is to run with no abandon and without a care in the world that anyone is watching. I'm so sorry. You were right. This feels great. See? And you don't care if people are staring. It's just for a second, because then you're gone. Number three, seducing Chandler. Oh, hello, Mr. Bicep. In what might be arguably the funniest Friends episode of all time, the gang grapples with the secret that Chandler and Monica have been secretly dating and trying to hide it from everyone. Oh, Chandler and Monica! Chandler and Monica! Joey has known for a while about what's going on and has been struggling to help them keep it under wraps. The situation culminates in Joey, Rachel, and Phoebe coming up with a ploy to try to trick Chandler into admitting that he and Monica are together. Their genius idea is that Phoebe will attempt to seduce him, forcing him to stop her and admit the truth. I'm really looking forward to you and me having sexual intercourse. <laughs> what follows is pure comedic gold, complete with lotion, bras, and an incredibly unsexy kiss. Okay, 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 you're fine, you, you win. <laughs> I can't have sex with you. Number two, bagpipes. Oh, no thanks, I don't like anything from my Scottish heritage. What? <laughs> when Monica and Chandler are planning their wedding in season seven, Ross volunteers his musical skills for the occasion. No, we're not talking about Ross's sound. We mean his newfound bagpiping abilities. What is that? I think it's the dying cat parade. <laughs> When he prepares a trial performance for Monica Chandler, Rachel, and Phoebe, it sounds so abominably bad that they can hardly keep a straight face. Phoebe, however, recognizes the song he's attempting and decides to sing along in her own enthusiastic and screechy rendition of Cool and the Gang's Celebration. As you might expect, her accompaniment doesn't make Ross sound any better, but it does add another layer of hilarity to the scene. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. No! You son of a bitch! Oh, for God's sake, Judy, pick up the sock! Pick up the sock! Pick up the sock! Are you going to plunge your stake into my dark places? Actually, I was kind of hoping it would be the other way around. <laughs> Number one, Smelly Cat. I'm just, I'm just not getting that everyone um, gets how smelly this cat actually is. There is nothing that Phoebe is more known for than her delightfully strange songwriting skills. And there is no song more famous than the unforgettable Smelly Cat. Any real Friends fan knows all the lyrics by heart, even if they haven't watched the show in years. Smelly cat, smelly cat, what are they feeding you? Viewers first heard the song in season two, but it comes back time and time again whenever you least expect it. The funniest moment of all just might be a smelly cat music video. Smelly, 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 really bad, smelly, smelly cat, it's not your fault. Smelly cat, smelly cat, oh my god. I know. I sound amazing. While the staff writers may have come up with the lyrics for Smelly Cat, Lisa Kudrow claims that she created the melody all on her own. Come on, you know you want to sing along. It's not your fault. Oh no. I've, I've, I've never heard myself sing before. I mean, except in my own head. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.